everyone and peace of Christ all of you please invite your friends and don't forget to share the link in all kind of uh, network it's very important for us actually to share uh, what we do here because the more we get people here the more people learn it's not about numbers as much as about sharing knowledge remember numbers doesn't count quality always count uh, the reason actually I'm late you know I don't really prepare for what I do I mean I saw a comment yesterday and the Muslim he posted a comment but looked like he deleted and all this time I'm looking for it trying to find it you know um, I cannot find it because I told him I'm going to wait for my answer he said imagine you are in a boat this is at the beginning of his I mean it's a long long article Muslims they are very good in copy and paste imagine if you are in a boat don't you want to know where you're going i don't know i the muslims you know i i assume that muslims are a nation assume with experience let us say they are people who don't listen they don't nobody want to listen don't you want to know where you're going i mean how many times we repeat for them that you muslim believe in fate not in a choice which means it's not you who decide where you're going and you do not know where you're going if somebody can tell me where i can find the comment in the two previous videos i cannot find it really i don't know you know uh, maybe he deleted maybe in one of the response it was not a direct uh, post because it doesn't show right away you know when a Muslim he gives us a speech and like he like you know they are emotional people supposedly like don't you want to know where you're going imagine you are in a boat don't you want to know who like look who is talking about who is going where we have your prophet is telling us how it work so you as a Muhammad and you are the last one to tell anyone where you're going read carefully what your prophet said they are they decide to be deaf you see Muhammadan, they are people who they block their ears and they don't want even to hear their prophet, not me. Don't listen to me. So when you post an article in the length of, of, of a journal, I mean the guy he posted, I think he posted the whole website. It's not an it's not a like it's not a comment. Imagine yourself in a boat. Don't you want to know where you're going? Okay, and Islam will tell you where you're going. Let us see what Muhammad say. So all your article, which is like, I don't know how many hundred line or 50 line or 60 line. And I was like screwing down, screwing down. I mean, when this, when this post will end, it's a comment, supposedly, copy paste nation. Read carefully with me. How many times we need to repeat this to you every day? How long you will stay ignorant? You do not know where you're going as a Muslim. According to your religion, your religion, your prophet explained where you're going. He is saying to you clearly and loudly, we don't know. Because it's based on your luck. If Allah decides to send you to hell, you are going to go to hell. It's not what you do. Muhammad is swearing by Allah, not Christian prince. Look like even Muhammad don't count for them. I think Muslims don't believe in Muhammad no more. Muhammad is a stupid idiot and we will not listen to him. Muhammad taken an oath by Allah, the fabricated God. By Allah, a person among you or a man may do the deeds of people of fire till there is one only a cupid, an arm breath distance. Almost you are there, 90, less than a, less than a, meter, a, a, a meter distance between you and the gate of heaven or the gate of hell. And then, then that is written which Allah has ordered the angels to write proceed and he does the deeds of people of paradise and he entered <laughs> so let us say assume that most time they speak they speak that uh, you have to have a good deed you have to be a good person which is false and we can prove that all of this is a false good person in Islam there's no teaching of a good person they say to you don't drink that will make you good but beat your wife 
Well, as I know, a person who is drunk, he might beat his wife, true, but a person who is not a drunk, how is God say to him, beat your wife? Obviously, the God himself is a drunk. What kind of a person, he claimed to be God, teaching me how to fix my family, and I fix my family by beating my wife? Or what kind of God, he says, a man is lawful for him to lie in three cases, starting from his family. I mean, what, what, lying, a wife lying to her husband and a husband lying to his wife. What kind of a family we have? So when they speak about Islam, teach us how to have a good manner. Where is the manner if you don't even cannot be honest with your wife, the one you kiss her, the one she had babies from you, the mother of your children, the one you should trust for all your secrets, the one who she can count how many breathe you have when you are sleeping. Even this woman, you lie to her. And this is the rules of Islam. And then we find that if you are a person who go, let us say, you know, you are not following Muhammad, you don't pray. You don't go to Hajj. You don't do Jihad. You don't hate Christian Prince. You don't want to kill him. And then there is a one meter distance between you and hellfire. And then, brother and sisters, then brother, but then, but then, which was written by Allah, will take over. Proceed. Action, action. And he does the deeds of the people of paradise and he entered it. I feel like I'm crying. So the idiot, the idiot who was praying all his life, he might go to hell. And the idiot who was not praying his life, he might go to heaven. I mean, look at this drama. And then Muhammad, he continued, and a man may do the deeds of people of paradise till there's only a cubit or two between him and paradise. And then the writing proceed, and he does the deeds of people of hellfire, of, so of, of, uh, of uh, fire, and he enter it. Here we have a guy who joined ISIS, Al-Qaeda, he go to Hajj, uh, he, he, uh, he threat to kill Christian prince, uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he do whatever he can do to, to protect Allah, because Allah is a pagan God, need protection. The true God do not need protection. So this person doing jihad, praying to Allah, shaving his pubic area, and drinking camel urine. Perfect Muslim. And when he died, they put a piece of cotton in his anus. Why? Because there's 99 dragons will go inside his anus. True story. I mean, obviously, the prophet is right. If you put a piece of cotton in your anus, the dragon cannot get in. Look like the dragon, he have a weakness spot. Cotton. You put a cotton there, you are safe. And actually, Muhammad, he gave them more security too. He says, if you are a person who read this Quran, your button is protected. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid city of religion like this? If you read their scriptures, as they call it scriptures, then your anus is protected. I mean, how stupid you are even to insult your book, to say reading Quran, protect your anus. Obviously, my anus is so much protected, nobody read Quran as I do. I read it every day. Ninety-nine dragons, every dragon have nine heads, or seven heads, depending on the story, because Muhammad he cannot repeat the same story twice correctly. So, based on what your prophet said, not what I said, because now he will say to me, Christian Prince, you are giving false interpretation. What, even this one need interpretation? Even this one need interpretation? So stop coming and saying to people, Islam will save your life. Islam is a guidance. Islam, if you pray, if you convert, if you etc., it's a joke, it's a lie. As you see, your prophet, he told us what Islam is about. Islam is nothing. Islam, there's a God, he's drunk, and he have a bullet in his gun. And he keeps shoot. The lucky one is the one who's done good shot, he go to heaven. So let us say, one space is empty, and one space have a, a, a bullet. So he keep rooting his gun. Ah, oh, I killed you, you go to hell. 
Ah, uh, you are lucky. There's no bullet. Because as you see, it's a fate. So all the Islamic propaganda machine is the most stupid propaganda machine ever. Now, the guy, the same guy, which I cannot find his comment, he said, uh, do you know that the, there is two verses is missing in the Bible? I mean, look at the Muslim who is talking. A Muslim speaking about two verses are missing in the Bible. This He said in, the, in, in one translation, they are not there. My friend, let us say for the sake of argument, the whole book you mention is not there. Nothing will change. Not, uh, not two verses. If we take that book, I think he was quoting from first John. I think I forgot where he quoted from. And he said there's a translation. It's a translation, first of all. Secondly, let us say for the sake of argument, there is such a thing. How you as a Muslim talk about such a thing? Because always this will backfire on you. And I will tell you why. When the Muslim, he come to us and he say the Bible is corrupted, what Christians they do usually? Ask any Christian, go to any Christian channel, YouTube, whatever. For years and years, I keep repeating to Christians, don't do this. Don't defend the Bible. You do not need to defend the Bible. They just gave you actually a bullet to shoot Muhammad in his bum. When the Muslims, he say to us, that the Christian Bible is corrupted, he is not talking about your book. He's talking about a book sent by Allah. For the Muslim believe that Allah, he sent the book, it's called Injil. So what's your problem as a Christian? Why are you Christian, you jump to a conclusion that he is talking about your book? Remember, those are not atheists or Hindus. Those people, they believe that their God is the one who sent a prophet. His name is Isa. And this Isa, Allah, he gave him a book. It's called Injil. That's wonderful. And this Injil, a Muslim, he says to you, it's corrupt. Okay, what's your problem? Do you believe in Isa first? No. Do you believe that the God of Islam gave us a book? No. So the Muslim is talking about his own God, his own book, not about mine. However, this is against him, not against me. Because if Allah, he sent down the Injil, as you see in all those verses in the Quran, who is the one should protect the book? This is not my book. This is the book of Allah, supposedly. So when a foolish Muhammadan, he says to you, the Injil is corrupted, he is speaking and making fun of his God. Say yes, <laughs> absolutely. Your stupid God, he is so weak to the point he cannot even protect a page. In the same time, How the Quran keeps saying that Allah is, you know, Allah Himself is confirming the book which was between their hands. You see here the translation says confirming what came before it. It doesn't say that. That's they are liars, deceivers. It says, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayi, confirming what is between his hands. You can copy this and take it to Google Translation right now. And you will see how they lie in the translation. So the stupid book says that the Bible is confirmed to be a true book of God. If this is our Bible, supposedly, you know. <clears throat> and this is 600 years after Jesus. This verse came down 600 years after Jesus, where the Bible is all over the world. So how a Muhammadan, he says something against his own book. And if I ask the Muhammadan, and every Muhammadan, he is now with us in the chat. Can a Muslim show me where Muhammad, he says the Bible is corrupt? They cannot. Let me show you what they will show you. But first, let us change the translator here. 
just to show you how the corruption of this religion work. Why they put what came before him, they did not put what between his hand. Why they change the words? There's a huge difference between what came before him and what is between his hands. Why the word between his hands disappear? Look, what came before it. This is another translation. Let us choose a different one, Muhammad Asad. Look at this guy here. Look at this guy. Look at this scumbag. Which confirming whatever still remains. I mean, they speak about corruption of books. I mean, who is the corrupt? Who is the one who have no dignity? This is what the Quran is saying. Whatever remain. Who is a Muslim? He want to get me busted. Who is a Muslim who speak Arabic? He want to read for me the verse and translate to me where it says whatever left of it. <laughs> Oh boy, what a religion, what a dignity, what, you know, this is a religion, the second you follow it, you became a certified liar. We change the translator, you will see that those words disappear. Let us go to Biktar. Let us see, Biktar, he will say whatever left over. Confirming what is revealed before it, the word between his hands is gone. It's not there, the word hand is not there. Nobody want to put it there. Let us change. Oh, let us see. Sahih International. Uh, confirming what was before it was. You see, was. Not what is between his hand now. No, was. Mm -hmm. Let us see more. Uh, Shakir. Uh, verifying that which is before it. Look here. Look, look how, that, how the meaning changed. Verifying what was revealed before it, verifying it. In order to verify something, it have to be between your hands. And this is what the Arabic says. We change the translation again. Maybe we can get lucky and find one of them. He have little dignity. What the Hun Khan? What is that? Even your your name is like a train. Uh, confirming. Uh, uh, what the truth which fulfills the predictions in the scriptures that preceded what this is a, this is have nothing to do with what the verse is saying oh boy uh, alhamdulillah this guy his name is alhamdulillah maybe this is a French hold on a uh, German we don't want German now let us go up maybe we can get lucky more Makamara Muhababaraki, okay. Confirming what came before it. Anyway, all of them they are saying confirming what came before it. But what if we do right now in the front of your eyes and we use Google Translation? Shall we? Let me open Google Translation page. It's a blind software. Will not take a side. It's not accurate, yes, but it will do the job. We will see if the word between his hands is exist at least. Google Translation. All right, we open the page. We will copy in the front of your eyes. Copy, paste. Let us open it. There we go. We will go to the verse. We will copy in the front of you. Copy. And then we go to Google Translation. Send down to you the book of the truth, confirming what was between his hands. But what was between his hands? Muhammad is there. The translation is not accurate. Musaddiq lima bayna yadihi, which is between his hands. The correct translation. So you notice that the word between his hands, confirming what is between his hands, is gone. The word hands is gone. Between is gone. Why they do that? Because that will cause a trouble. However, no problem. If we go to different verse in the Quran, forget about this one.
What about this one? All this verse is saying, confirming what is with them. Now, it's not what Muhammad, you see, the, the verse we gave you before is about a, 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 a Bible supposedly between the hands of Muhammad. He confirmed it. And when come to them, to the Jews and the Christians, he is put in between bracket words. It's not there. The word Jews is not there. So when it come to them, to the Jews, a book, the Quran, between two bracket, or from Allah confirming what is with them. <laughs> Do you see it? So when a foolish Abdul all over the internet keeps saying, uh, the Bible of the Christian brother, it's proven to be corrupted. You eat it. It's what we would do with your Quran. That's mean the Quran is corrupted. When your Quran confirm that the book which is between the hands of the, the Jews and the hand of the Christian, which means both the gospel and the Torah, is it true? And he confirming it. And this is 600 years. Don't you Muslim, you say the one who changed the Bible is Paul? Well, this is almost 600 years after Paul. And your God confirming what Paul he said. So the Muslims, when they come to us and they speak about the Bible corruption, this is even against their God, because if this is true, that means their God is weak, he cannot protect his book. He is the one who sent the Injil according to them. And then this God, he cannot protect his book. And then you need to ask yourself, why does God, he don't protect his book? What is the problem? There's a video, let me see if I can find it. They ask, no, Man Khan, I have it open, I think. Let me see. Show me your this is a previous video from the last time. Let us close it. Okay. All right. They are asking Norman Khan a question. Why only the Quran is preserved? Why? The Muslim, he have an answer for that. Come, come, come. This is easy. A Muhammad, and he knew everything. So why, why the only one who knows, a whole, the only book is preserved? Allah, he sent 124,000 prophet, which means 124,000 books. And then all the books of Allah are corrupted, except one brother. That make Allah the worst of librarian. Imagine you are a person who have a library, and you are an author of books, and you wrote 124,000 books, and you idiot, you did not protect your books, and the end you decide, you know what, what I'm doing, I'm being stupid here, I keep writing books, and they keep corrupting it. I mean, what's wrong with me? I keep writing book after book after book after book, 124,000 books, and each time I send a book, they give me a finger. Right? So this is against them, not against us. The claim that the Bible is corrupt is against them. If you are a person who want to believe in God, that he sent 124,000 messengers with them, 124,000 books, and he could not protect any book except the book is called the Quran. This is their claim. How stupid is that? Now listen carefully. I did not watch the video, by the way. I searched for the name, you know. I searched and I, I saw the beginning of it, but I did not hear the answer yet. So let's see. But to ask question, let me seize this opportunity for a reason, as I'm a student of Bayina online. I have benefited, benefited a lot from uh, Quran Tafsir cover to cover series and Arabic Udusna. Mashallah, Jazakallah, Hair Sheikh. Everybody here, please subscribe to Noman Ali Khan, hey. Facebook, and Bayina. You will really know Allah's kalam word by word. 
I'm reading my I'm reading, 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 reading. I don't know. Is that in English? I'm not. I, maybe I chose the wrong, uh, you know. I don't know. He's speaking English. And he has unearthed so many gems. Mashallah. Zakallah khair. Can you put forward your there, question if you will have one? There is a numerous miracles in the Quran. One of the most miracles which I have been always wondering about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved this Quran for so many years till day of judgment. Uh, why is it the other revelations like uh, Injil and Torah is not preserved? Does it have any effect on the Quran which is said it will not be preserved and the Ummah is left in confusion? Bismillah <laughs> for your question. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal in His wisdom gave the responsibility of protecting the revelation every time to the Ummah that it was given to. Oof, 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 oof. Uh, brother and sisters, now the Muslim Muhammad will explain to you why Allah he don't protect the other books because he always he give the responsibility to the nation he gave them the book. You are responsible. <laughs> Let us open the Quran and laugh at this idiot. Because what he is saying is hilarious and will expose the God of Islam. Oh boy. Read carefully with me and die laughing. Anyone notice with me how stupid this verse is? Who is the one will find me the the one thousand million dollar word in this verse would destroy all of Islam? Would destroy the idea that there is a God, His name is Allah. Who can find me that word in this verse? Who want to help me? There is one word. One word would destroy every, everything about Islam. Just one word. Anyone can help me? Let us see who of you is very fast, fast uh, thinking person. One word only. Anyone knows? He just entrusted. Thank you, Darivis. Darivis. Entrusted. Do you know what interested me? So when Allah he trusted the Jews or the Christians with the book, was he right? You know what trust mean? Trust mean, I trust you. I believe you are good to, to do the job. So what I do, I trust you. I give you the key of my house. I trust you to be a decent person, you will not do nothing wrong. This is what trust mean. You go, you take your money to the bank because you trust the bank that anytime you want the money back, they give it to you. But trust is not absolute. When you speak to human, why? Because a human can deceive, can lie, can cheat, can betray. Okay. But when God he trusts, a person don't Allah he knew that his trust is wrong because also obviously according to this guy he is saying that Allah he gave the responsibility to protect the book the Bible the, the Torah to the people but this is mean Allah is not God because obviously he is doing the wrong trust When Allah, he says, I trust you, and then we find that he cannot be trusted, that means Allah is just the same as us. He is, a, you know, he do mistakes, and he was wrong. Do you see how, was, and this is destroyed that Allah is all-knowing. The Muslim, they keep saying to us, Allah is all-knowing, Allah is all-knowing. All-knowing what? Your God do not even know where the sperm is coming from. So, this is a phrase which will give you the proof that Islam is stupid. In the same time, what we will do with that verse is where it says that Allah 
confirming what is between their hands, confirming what is with them, what you will do with those verses. So when the Muslim, they say something, they speak against their own religion, they speak with their ignorance, and the Muslims are praising this guy, how smart he is, Allah, he trusted the Jews and the Christians to protect their book. How silly. Why don't Allah, he knew that he should not trust them if they are not trustworthy? And when you say he trusted a nation, I mean, how in the world anyone can believe in such a garbage? Because the whole nation agree to change the book. Is the Christian one nation? Are we from one ethnic group, one color? Are we? So what do you mean he gave it to a nation? That explore another stupid things in the Quran. Why? Because the Quran says that Allah He sent the book only to a nation who speak a tongue. Read carefully and see the stupidity again. Actually, when I say Muhammad is a stupid, I'm insulting stupid ones. They might sue me because it's not fair. This guy is beyond stupidity. We and we send not a messenger except with the language of his people. So if the Injil is a book was sent to the people of Jesus, well, the people of Jesus, according to you Muslims, are Hebrew. So how come the book, his name is a Greek? Have you ever heard of a madness like this? Jesus was sent to the, to, the, to the people of Israel and yet his book is in a Greek because this is what the word in G is. So imagine there's a messenger, his name is a Chin Chong Hong 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 Bruce Lee. Allah, he sent him to China and Bruce Lee, he gave him a, they gave him a Greek book. Genius. But look, it says clearly, and we send not a messenger except with the language of his people. So he have to be from the people, speaking the tongue of the people. So when this edit, he says that, and the Quran says that Allah, he sent a book and trusted the nation with that book. That's mean Jesus, he been given a book, a Greek book, and he gave it to the Greek. <laughs> and that means Jesus is not from Israel or born in Israel. He's a Greek. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Isn't it hilarious? But this is what happened. The stupid Muhammad, he heard the Christians saying Injil, 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 the Greek word. He called it Injil too. And he said, Allah told me. He didn't know by choosing such a word, he just get himself busted in the same time. By the way, if there's any Muslim would like to call me, I will open my pal talk anytime you want, if you like to challenge me. When the Quran says we sin not, a messenger except with the language of his people. So how Muhammad can be a messenger to a person speak Urdu? Or a Turkish guy, Aman, Rabbi Aman, Baragam, Baragam. Or somebody from Germany, Afshishnachtishnicht. Or somebody from Russia, from Russia, my name is Olga, from Russia. How Muhammad can be a messenger for them when the Quran says we never send a messenger unless he is from the people? Speaking the tongue of the people. Never, never we send. The Muslim, they have an answer for you. They will say, oh, this is for all the prophet before Muhammad. <laughs> but Abdul, Abdul, he said in the time of Muhammad, this is a message was given to Muhammad. <laughs> Not to someone. <laughs> After Muhammad, so he said, We never sent, we never, we never, never, never. Muhammad was sent already. 
Muhammad is already a messenger. So imagine I am already a messenger of Allah for the last 10 years. And then Allah, he says to me, we never send a messenger except in the language of his people to all people they can understand. And then I say to you, oh, he's speaking about people before me. How stupid are you? He just said, we never sent. Muhammad already is sent. Long time ago. And the Quran make it more clear, which actually this is the only this is the only place the Quran trying to be, let us say, logical. Look at this. Why Allah He never sent the messenger except he speak the tongue of the people and he is from the people, which means he is not a person who learn a language. He is a person, he is from the people. Listen carefully. This this doesn't go for someone he speak a language of a nation. No. You have to be from the nation. The Quran is so clear. Even we don't agree with the Muslim Abdul translation, but even this one is so clear. And you can change the translation if you want. So there's two conditions for a messenger to be sent to a nation. He have to be a person who know the language of the people. And this is, those are his people. Muhammad, he just lost the reason to be a prophet to any nation except the Arab. Correct? Muhammad, he lost the claim. Muhammad, he said that when he thought in the beginning he will not be successful even with the Arab. He was trying to present himself as an Arab messenger. And then suddenly Muhammad, he switched the switch. Suddenly he became for everybody. Everybody have to be subdued to Islam, otherwise die or give me your woman. Do you see it? And the Quran says, why Allah he will never send a messenger except speaking the tongue of his people in order he might make the message clear for them. And here there's another another dilemma of the stupid Muhammadan religion. I say the stupid Muhammadan religion because I'm talking about the Muhammadan religion, not the Muhammadan himself. Muhammadan are poor people. Stupid Muhammadan religion. This is the religion of stupidity. Because how you say, I'm going to make it clear for you, and yet those who speak Arabic, they do not know how to explain the Quran. Now look, look, look with me. The Quran now is in Arabic. And Allah is saying, we made it in the language so you might understand. Okay, do you Muslim understand? Forget about the one who don't speak Arabic. You Arab, do you understand? You don't. Even the Quran says so. Actually, there's a, there's a video. Let me see. Hold on. If I can find it. <clears throat> Oh boy. All right, let us see this one. Actually, this video here will fit perfectly with our topic. The video title is, We Ask Allah Tafsir of the Last Two Verses of the Chapter of the Cow. The Zoo Religion. Okay. Let us go to the topic. I'm going to forward. In my talk, I will share with you some parts of uh, the theory and the principles of Quran study beyond this, you know, the, the universal ulum al-Quran, uh, the sciences of the study of Quran that many people are familiar with, especially those of you that study tafsir. I'm not going to make this an academic topic, by the way. I will not make it academic topic, by the way. Supposedly he's academic, supposed like he is a high scholar. You are right. What a joker you are. 
I will not make it. You see, when they speak to you like from above and you are like down, you know, I will not make it academic because I know you are a bunch of goat who does listening. And the proof is what I will say. Because if those are listening are not a bunch of goats, they don't use their brain. How come nobody stand for him and says, are you stupid or what? This is the same guy in the same video where he says that Muhammad, he accepted Islam after the angel come to him and squeezed him. You remember? This is the same video. If you remember the moment, it was moment 23rd. He said the prophet, he became a Muslim. That's me, Muhammad, he was a pagan person all his life. And that can hurt the fame of any Muslim. Because this is destroy Islam. Muslim, they keep saying to us, Muhammad was Abrahamic. Muhammad was uh, a believer. Muhammad, he followed Abraham. Mm -hmm. So why this guy is saying this? The Messenger believed in what was revealed to him. You know what's remarkable about that? Yeah, tell us. In the beginning of the surah, what are the first words? Alif, Lam, Mim, Thalika, Al Kitab. No, hold on, hold on. I want to go back. Three no, first came. Okay. To Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly. Okay. Bila hijab. Allah spoke to Muhammad directly. <laughs> We're here. He's telling him directly. Uh -huh. He's telling directly by giving him a delivery by a guy. I mean, have you ever heard of this directly? So somebody spoke to somebody, and that somebody spoke to somebody, and that means it's directly. True story. The thing he tells him is that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. See, if you're talking to someone, yeah. if I talk to you, if you're, for example, a professor, mm -hmm. I say, you are sitting here. I don't say the professor is sitting here. Because if I'm talking to you, I use the second person. I don't use the third person. Mm -hmm. But Allah is talking to the Messenger والسلام, What does He say? Amana Rasul. Lam yaqul, Amanta. Amanta. Yukhatibu mubasharatan. Alayhis kedalik. He's talking to him directly. He didn't say you believed. He said the Messenger believed. <laughs> Look at this. He didn't say to him you believe. He said the, the Messenger believed. Okay, what happened? Explain to us more. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa hadha takreeman lil nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam. Even in his presence, he speaks of him in the third person to honor him alayhi salatu wa sallam. Look at this. The messenger is not just any messenger. Absolutely. The messenger believed. I mean, come on. This is the messenger who used to be the most weak person in sexual intercourse. And then he invoked Allah and Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab. He ate it and he got the power of 40 men. I mean, there's no messenger like him. Have you ever heard of a messenger, he come with such a claim that he used to be the most weak person in sexual intercourse? And what is the solution? He prayed to Allah and then Allah, he go to the kitchen. And then in the kitchen, he made for him a shish kebab. He sent it to him in a dish. Jibreel, he gave him the dish. He knocked at the door. Hey, Muhammad, I got something for you. Muhammad, he opened the dish. He ate the dish and boing, boing. His holy penis is so powerful, became a powerful as 40 men. And by the way, I'm not going to ask the Muslims how they noticed that it's a power of 40 men. Like, did you bring competition and you have like 40 men having sex at the same time and Muhammad beat them all? And why 40 again? Is that Alibaba and the 40 thief? Even when he gave him a dish, he stuck with the number 40. The power of 40 men. After eating a dish, if the Muslim, they say, if Allah want to fix something, he say, B is going to be. How come Allah in this time, he's going to the kitchen making shish kebab? By the way, did he add spice? And we can, can we trust the beef he sent us? Is it, is it beef? Is it pork? Who in the world want to believe that God, he sent a dish to somebody and that will make that body penis work? Oh, Muhammad. Muhammad said so. So when this guy, he say, no one like the Prophet, we agree. Continue, go ahead. And Allah is letting him know that when Jibreel first came, alayhi salam, when Jibreel first came, even the messenger even. had to accept Islam. Like, you know, we say somebody converted to Islam, somebody mm -hmm. reverted to Islam, somebody yeah. took Shahada. Yeah. 
Well, the Messenger والسلام, also had to, in a sense, become Muslim. Uh -huh. So he was, so he became a Muslim, so he was the Muslim. So the lies they say to us that Muhammad was Abrahamic all his life. Muhammad was following Abraham all his life. Muhammad was not a pagan all his life is a lie. Here we go, you just heard it. Now he became a Muslim because remember the Muslim, they say Abraham was a Muslim. So if Muhammad was following Abraham, that's when he was a Muslim. But obviously he just said, no. He just became a Muslim. 40 years in age, he was not a Muslim. And even the Quran says that Muhammad was a lost person. If you remember, we have a Muslim, he called me, his name is Mustafa, I don't know if he's there. He said clearly that yes, the Prophet, he was lost. Uh, a Muslim is saying to us, Muhammad Abadi, I feel sorry for your fans. My friend, feel sorry for the penis of your Prophet first. We have a prophet who his penis was not functioning. We have a prophet, he go to the bed and he imagined himself having sex. He never did. Do you feel sorry for such a prophet? Who was bewitched according to you? Who is the one coming to be sorry for who? Brothers and sisters, we have an amazing prophet. He was bewitched. Brother, what was the impact of his bewitching on the prophet? Brother, nothing. Only his penis, brother. Look, what? And his brain. What? And his tongue. What? And his imagination. What is left? And you are feeling sorry for our fans? What about you? Why you don't call me and tell me how you feel about this story? That you're a prophet, he used to imagine himself having sex, but in fact, there's no woman there. Read it. Aisha, she said, not me. The prophet continued for such and such a period, imagining that he had boom boom, sexual intercourse with his wife. In fact, he did not. In fact, what? He did not. Where is Mr. Abadi? Do you feel sorry for your prophet? Imagine you are a prophet of Allah and you are Muhammad. And you tell your wife, hey wife, how's the, how's the business we did? She said to you, what? Said, Come on, we know like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know, like, you know, like, what are you talking about? You did nothing. Then he go to the second wife. Uh, hey, Hafsa, how is the boom boom, you know? What boom boom? You did not even touch me for the last month. Um, he go to the third wife, the fifth wife, the sixth wife, the seventh wife, the eighth wife, the ninth wife, the tenth wife, the eleventh wife, the twelfth wife. Shall we continue to tomorrow? And he was what? Imagining. He was what? Imagining. Now here we have the other issue here. As long as Muhammad is imagining and is proven to be illusional, how we can trust him that he was seen an angel and he was seen a message messenger of God giving him Quran? The guy is proven in their books that he is crazy. He cannot recognize what is a reality and what is fiction. To the point, I mean, Muhammad is a person who have no witnesses even for his sex. This is your book, and this is Sahih Bukhari, and this is Aisha. Are you going to say Aisha is not being fair? So how we can trust that Muhammad he saw? No, 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 this is not what a dream. This is not what a dream. This guy is awake. This is not in a dream because imagining, you see, he is he is thinking that he did it. He's lost. His brain is gone. This is not about a guy who saw a dream. No, this is different. That's why they are saying to you he was bewitched. If you see a dream, that doesn't make you. You see, the Arab, they call anyone who loses his mind. They can't explain why he is saying the things or doing things. They say he was bewitched. As simple as that. Because physically he looked fine. And stupid things done happen to him from time to time, not all the time. You know, like he, he do crazy stuff from time to time. But sometimes you speak to him, he's normal. 
And this is the situation of Muhammad. Now, if we go back to the video, which we are playing for you, I want to show you what this person, he said about the Quran. And I want the Muslim to listen carefully. Remember, the video supposedly is about explaining two verses in the Quran. And remember, the Quran says, as we showed you, that Allah, he made the Quran clear to you. In order to make it clear, he made it in Arabic. An hour, two hours and seven minute videos to explain two verses. Can you believe it? Two hours and seven minutes lecturer to explain two verses. Do you see how he cleared the Quran? And did he clear it? No, because we are laughing at it. Listen carefully what he will say in the beginning. I will go and let us see when he start. Sheikh starts getting super high academic then you, it's like he's releasing sleeping gas from his mouth and you just inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, right? And, mm. and so first thing you hear is inna alhamdulillah and the next thing you hear is aqibis salat. That's the only thing you hear, so. <laughs> he's making fun of Islamic teachers. He says something, he ended because he explained nothing and supposedly he is going to explain to us. Go ahead, mister. Yeah, stop making fun of the rest of the Muslims. He is the genius. <laughs> so we'll try not to do that, inshallah. But anyway, one of the cool things I want to share with you is that um, one of the most fascinating studies in the Quran uh, is actually how the, the surahs of the Quran are organized. Hmm. And this is actually a number of different subjects together. The first subject is how are the surahs themselves organized? Fatiha is first, Baqarah is second, Ali Imran is third, etc. etc. Why are they in this order? Uh, because from a, from a Western academic standpoint, um, and by the way, I, when I, the first time I studied Quran seriously, it was not from Muslims. It was from non-Muslims. Take a note. The first time this person, he studied Quran seriously, it was not from Muslims. Muslims never study Quran seriously. Their study is a joke. He learned it from us, how to study Quran seriously. Now listen carefully what he learned. And when they study the Quran, they don't say, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. They begin, like they study any literature, they start with criticism. We, we start, when we study the book of Allah, we begin with hamd, we begin with praise. Hmm. We begin with iman that this is the best, you know, وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُنَا آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا Okay, this is what we say. That's not what they say. <laughs> they begin with criticism. And the funny thing, supposed he is a smart teacher. But then he read in Arabic, or he said sentence in Arabic, but he don't translate it. But all the audience are English-speaking people. I mean, do you see the stupidity? This is the lack of intellect. Because when you quote, when you say something in Arabic, and all your audience are English-speaking people, and you don't translate what you just said, how stupid is that? What's the point of saying that sentence? Because he want to show you he's a scholar, he knew Arabic. It's a short time. Criticism, skepticism. And so the first exposure, one of the first serious exposures I had to the Qur'an was actually criticism. And the first criticism was the Qur'an is unorganized. The surahs are in this random order and the subject keeps going from one to the other and even they call them chapters of the, uh, the Qur'an, right? That's what they call it. But they don't call it surah, they call it a chapter. Even though a chapter and a surah are not the same thing at all. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. They call it a chapter, they don't call it a surah. Why are you, why your God? He did not name every surah by surah. <laughs> why your Quran doesn't say this is the surah of the cow, as long as you want them to use it, use the word surah. Secondly, it's not a surah, it's a surah. Your prophet is copying the Aramaic. And he mentioned something very important. That those who study the Quran, right away they will find that the Quran is an organized book. Did you hear it, Muslims? And he agreed. And he will agree and he will confirm that.
there is a, a study made by some German historian. They come with very clear, many good evidence actually, that the Quran was not even in Arabic. This is why we see the word Surah in the Quran, you know, exist. This is the Aramaic way of saying the word. If you ask a Muslim, what is Surah mean? What is Surah mean? Is it a chapter? They say yes. But the Quran never came, came as a chapter. The guy now, he will tell you how Surah work. What Surah? What is the word Surah mean? He said that the Western, they call it chapter, they don't call it Surah. And he will say to you that there is a difference between them. What is different? Listen carefully. The serious exposures I had to the Quran was actually criticism. And the first criticism was the Quran is unorganized. The surahs are in this random order and the subject keeps going from one to the other and even they call them chapters of the, uh, the Quran, right? That's what they call it. But they don't call it surah, they call it a chapter. Even though a chapter and a surah are not the same thing at all. They're not the same. I personally don't agree with the translation of surah as chapter, I don't. Because there's a certain standard in literature for a chapter. A chapter has logical points that are made in chronology. And if a chapter, like chapter 5, is going to repeat something from chapter 3, they won't do it the same way. They'll just say, refer back to chapter 3. Did you hear it, Muslims? This is an organized, smart, intelligent book. And instead of repeating the same stupid thing, we say to you, go and open page number, etc., in chapter, etc., the Quran doesn't do that. And he agreed that the Quran is suffering from the flight of thoughts because a topic has nothing to do with the next topic. So how this can be a book from God? And now he's saying, I don't agree with the chapter because the chapter will make the Quran a perfect organized book. The Quran is not. He just said that. That's what chapters do. They're built chronologically. The other thing about chapters is you cannot begin a book with chapter 12. You can't do it. You have to begin with chapter what? One. One. And one is the first thing the author writes. Then the author writes two. Then the author writes three. Then the author writes four. And even the student has to study chapter one first, and then two, and then three, and then four. See? But when the Quran was revealed, the, or the first surah revealed, Iqra bispi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Where is that in the Quran? <laughs> is that in the beginning? No. That's all the way at the end. Exactly. This is how a smart, intelligent being here write a book. So why the Quran is messed up? The first revelation supposedly given to Muhammad is not the first in the book. And we just heard him saying, when an author he write a book, he start with the chapter one. You don't go and read the chapter 50, which is the last chapter in the book. But this is what the Muslim did. Allah supposedly he gave Muhammad the chapter of Iqra, the one where Muhammad being squeezed by the, by, by the guy, the cave. And by the way, the Muslims are not in total agreement about which, excuse me, which the first one Muhammad you receive. They have the different stories about it. But this is the majority, they say, that the first one Muhammad received is this chapter. And if we go to the Quran, we will find it, as he said, at the end of the Quran. So how something who is supposedly in the beginning of the Quran become at the end of the Quran? Read carefully. This is a chapter 96. This guy, he just destroyed all the claim of Muslims that the Quran is preserved. Because if you Muslim preserve the Quran, you don't change the words of the Quran location. If Allah, he gave it to you first chapter, how you make it number 97? Who gave you authority? If Allah gave you authority, Muslims, show me. Go ahead. 
how the last chapter because this is almost at the end you know if we if we check here you will see there's a few a few chapters left this is 96 and the quran is 114 and and they are very small tiny the rest like the, the one at the end they are like nothing stupid verses i can't even call them verses or chapters So how you preserve the Quran and yet you change the location of its chapters and verses? If we go to the Quran again, we will check this. Read carefully. In the Quran, in chapter 4, verse number 46, in chapter 5, verse number 13, in chapter 5, verse 41, it's speaking carefully that there is some of the Jews, they, the Quran used the word, they change the location of words from their location. They don't change the words. They change, don't change the words. But they change the location. If you go and read what the story here, you will see there's a Jew. He put his finger over a word. That is the change. He did not take the word. He did not move it by writing. He did not move it to different page. He did not move it to different chapter. No. He just put his finger over a verses or a verse, which is about stoning to death for a woman or a punishment for adultery. So the Quran saying it's forbidding to change the location of God's words even by putting your finger in the top of them. So how you Muslim you change the whole chapters from their locations? Do we have any Muslim in the bushes? If the Quran confirm that the change in location of verses or words from the right place and the story the Jews did not even change it. There's just a guy, he put his finger in the top of a line so Muhammad cannot see it. Go and read the interpretation. Actually, there's a hadith about it. If that is a corruption by putting your finger over a line in the book claiming that this is a displace of the words from their location how about the Muslims who change the whole Quran location any Muhammadan we just heard the guy saying well good books written in a certain way Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, the Quran, no. Chapter 1 became at the end. Okay, who threw it there? And if the Quran is forbidding you from doing such an act, how you do that? Who gave you the authority? Give me his name. The Caliphate? Is he the Prophet? Is he God? Is the caliphate fixing Allah messed up book? Because this guy is saying to us that this is how the Quran is made today. Who made it this way? Let us hear more so we can laugh more. So if you're studying Quran right now from the beginning, you're going to read the first revelation at the end of your journey. <laughs> it's very different. So then the, the order is not even the order in which it was revealed. It's not chronological. No, it's not. The other problem is the order, you know, understandably the order. Hold on. Did he say the other problem? Did I hear correctly that the person he just said, the other problem? Uh, truth seeker, are you a Muslim, my friend? Are you a Muslim? 
let me know if you are a Muslim. He just said the other problem by saying that you just confirm that the Quran have many problems. He just count for us number one. And now we will go to problem number two. So how this is a perfect book? And you are going to explain to us the amazing book and you start with the problems. The problem which you are talking about is made by man or by God? Order is not, it doesn't seem to be organized by subject. What that means. <laughs> Did you hear it? The Quran is a messed up book. It's not organized by subject. So why it is not? I mean, have you ever heard of a book? One phrase talking about how to make salad, the verse after it speaking about oil leaking from the car. He just admitted this book is messed up. What is the second problem? Listen carefully. The second problem is the Quran is the book of no book. There's no book in the book. Chapters are not chapters, verses are not verses, topic is not there. So what is there? A crazy guy is talking. Say it again, please. Then the author writes two, then the author writes three, then the author writes four. And even the student has to study chapter one first, and then two, and then three, and then four. But when the Quran was revealed, the, or the first surah revealed, Iqra' bispi rabbika alladhi khalaq, where is that in the Quran? Is that in the beginning? That's all the way at the end. So if you're studying Quran right now from the beginning, you're going to read the first revelation at the end of your journey. It's very different. So then the, the order is not even the order in which it was revealed. It's not chronological. Mm -hmm. The other problem is the order, you know, understandably the order is not, it doesn't seem to be organized by subject. What that it doesn't seem to be organized by subject. Hmm. So Allah was wrong. Stupid God, we have to fix what he did. But even after we made the book for him a book, still it's messed up. Tell us more. What that means is that you know the subject matter in the Quran, um, like in Surah Al-Baqarah, today we're talking about Surah Al-Baqarah, the biggest surah of the Quran, 286 ayat revealed over several years. One part of it is actually Makki, the last. Oh, hold on. Guys, did you, hear, did you just hear what he said? Did you just hear? This is a chapter revealed over many years. So how it became a chapter? Muhammad was not receiving chapters. He did not. <laughs> Muhammad was receiving Quran. So who are you? And who is the one who put those verses, the one you called them Al-Baqarah, together? If Allah did not give him those verses together he, he received them within years and this within those years he received many other verses exist in other chapters so who is the one who decide where to put this verse and that verse if you want to say to me muhammad he decided that me muhammad is a stupid because you just admitted it's not organized so what is the reason to put them together stupidity we just heard him saying that Obviously, seem like the book is not topic organized. Wonderful. So who decide to put those verses together and make them a chapter? Are we making a salad dish? Is that a book of God or we as a believers, we decide what we put there, what we put it? Oh, yeah, brother, we should move this verse and put it there. I think it's better. It's up to you, right? But we just showed you the verses from the Quran saying that those who change words from their location, they are bad people. Right? <clears throat> uh, if this Christian prince was not a liar, he would provide the link 
the video it's here i will show you the link here we go guys here we go this is the link <laughs> i mean look how stupid even they're coming i'm playing the video you idiot which one is more important playing the video or giving you the link look how deep he is as if i am making my own video i mean the guy is speaking in the front of them in the video and this is their own institute the bayina institute 1.11 million subscriber if he is not a liar he will provide you with the link if he's not a liar <laughs> i'm playing the video for them and yet i'm a liar i mean look can you believe it if he is not a liar he will provide you a video for the link genius you just get me busted man i don't know what to do now i don't know what to do i'm, I'm trying guys i have to go sorry i mean this guy he got me busted that's it what i can say now In one click, in two seconds, he got me busted and I'm gone. If he's not a liar, he would provide a link to the video. Do you want to call me and sing it for us? You idiot, we are playing the video for you. Which one is more important? And how many times I say the video name, we will explain the last verses, two verses of the Surah of Al-Baqarah. Yeah, the influence of Kamal Yurin. Continue, Abdul. Last two ayat are Makki. These were revealed at the Mi'raj. So the most of the surah is revealed after the Prophet migrated, alayhi salatu wasalam. <laughs> but two ayat are from before he migrated. So this surah took almost a decade. And some say the last ayat to be revealed in the Quran belonged to Baqarah. Which means it began when the Prophet was still in Mecca. And it went on for another decade. So this surah took a long time to come down. It didn't come down in one shot. No. Now, See? having said that, okay. Baqarah, if you study it in the beginning, it's believers and disbelievers, you know, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ Believers and disbelievers. It talks about hypocrites, which is the third subject, right? Uh, you know, مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ The hypocrites. Then it talks about the story of Adam alayhi salam. Then there's this huge section on the history of, of the Israelites, Banu Israel. A long section. And by the way, even inside that section, there is no chronology, meaning some of the events that happened in Jewish history later are mentioned before, and things that happened before are mentioned later. So it's not even chronological. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? This is the amazing book. It's called the Quran. Brother, did you see the video of the cat, the guy who heard the azan for the first time? And they put a picture for you of a guy, his mouth is open like, whoa! What happened? Somebody gave you a shot? Corona shot, something? What happened? Why your mouth is open like this? He heard the azan, brother! They bring you a guy, he have a nice voice. This guy, whatever he say, it's going to sound nice. This is why you will not find in any tourist area, like in Turkey or etc. You will find always they choose the best voice to recite the Quran. But the Quran inside, as you see, is the most stupid book. And because you don't understand, so you don't see the stupidity, you see the voice. How many people they enjoy, sadly, a singer singing the F word? Hmm? And they dance with it. You have a nice voice, but he's using the SH word, the F word, the butt word, whatever word. Still, he's, they, are, they are happy with it, they love it. If you can explain chapter two, verse number 79. Okay, my friend, we will go back there. No worry, I will go there, I promise you. So listen carefully, people. They admit that the Quran is a messed up book. Has no logic. 
when you open the Torah, you find the book of Genesis. We know exactly what the book of Genesis is speaking about. Every book have a topic. Every book have an historic order. They can quote something from the previous book. That can happen. But the story is there, not in the quotation. Quotation is a quotation. The Quran is the most silly, stupid book. What this guy trying to say to you, if you read the Quran, you cannot understand anything. It's very confusing. It doesn't make any sense. But they, they are praising it, you know? They are praising it. And what he confirmed to us, actually, that the Muslims, they wrote the book by their hand. And this is why our brother there, he's keep asking me to read the chapter 2, verse number 79, where it says, we to those who write the scripture with their own hands. But this is Muslims who did that. If we ask the Muslims, did Allah he send you a book written by his hand? They will say no. Do you have a book written even by the hand of Muhammad? They will say no. Do you have even a book written by the hand of Uthman? They will say no. So who wrote the book you have? When the Quran say clearly in chapter 2, verse number 79, there's a curse, there's a penalty, there's a punishment over those who write the book by their own hands. Let us find the verse. Read carefully. Then we to those who write the book with their own hands. And then they say, this is from Allah. <laughs> to expose Muhammadan perfectly made to expose the situation of the Quran do we have any Muslim want to say anything it is you Muslim who wrote the book it is you Muslims who messed up the book. It is you Muslims who took verses, add verses as you wish. Actually, I can show you reference where Aisha, she said, that the chapter of Al-Baqarah, the same chapter he's talking about, this guy in the video, the chapter of the cow, Baqarah means cow, and the reason it's called cow, because Muhammad, he came with a story, a very stupid story, that there is a guy who was killed, and then, the Jews, they came to Moses and he said to him, we don't know who killed him. So they want to find the killer. Allah told Moses, go and get some beef. Some, they say, a tail of a cow or ox or a penis or some part of the cow. And beat the guy with it. And this can be found in the same chapter, actually. If you go just a few verses before, verse number 73. And the verse says it clearly that this is how Allah he raised people from death. <laughs> Allah he raised people from death. 
Muslims. I'm not the one who's saying so. It's your book. It says, and this is how Allah he raised people from death. Thus, read carefully, and thus Allah bring the dead to life. How? By the cow beating. I mean, if I am a Hindu, I will convert to Islam immediately. Well, but you might be upset because you are a Hindu, they are killing the cow. Okay, I think that's not a good idea. This is how God, he bring people from death, bring some beef and beat the guy with it. My friend, the one who is inviting me to join uh, whatever team you call them, how come the team don't dare to call me? They are the potato, the tiny, the little, the, 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 they have to call the big guy. I'm here, here we go. How come you are saying to me if you are sincere, but you don't ask them the question, if you are sincere to call yourself team, here we go, the guy, he go every day, he open his pal talk, he say he want to call me. You see how, how double standard you are? What do you want someone like me to go chase kids? Call me, get your scholars. Get me busted. If you are sincere. Stop spam spamming the text. You know, they are they are silly, stupid people. If you are sincere. I'm reading your Quran. And if you believe I'm sincere or not, I just prove that you are not sincere. Because if you Muslims are sincere, you will not corrupt your book. If you Muslims are not are sincere, you will not change the location of the verses. If you are sincere, you will not do what Allah forbid you from doing. You change, you write the Quran by your own hands. Did Allah allow you to write the Quran by your hands? Did he? So who care if you Muhammadan think I am sincere or not? For sure you will not accept what I am saying. But we are laughing and people leave Islam left and right. And let me block you because you keep spending, you know, it's just a stupid kid. If you are sincere, call us. Here we go, I am here, call me. <laughs> you know what? I will open just pal talk for you and for your team. Immediately. Let us see who is a sincere. I am the one who challenged you for years and years, and you potatoes don't dare to call me. Let us see who is sincere. The sincere is the one who says, okay, I'm going to call him. I am the one who make Muslims leave Islam. I don't care really what you say in your program about me. Prove me wrong, call me. Here we go. My pal talk is open. Who is a Muslim who is sincere to call me? Any sincere Muslim? Or you are a chat hero? Nobody texting, I'm waiting. My, sorry, not Skype, my pal talk is open. If any Mohammedan would like to call me, here we go, this is my pal talk. Let me show you the screen. It says a Christian Prince online. What do you want more? Call me, it will appear live on air and people will see it. Text me. Let us see the heroes. Let us see the sincere Muslims who they are willing to defend their religion. You are terrified. You speak about me in my back and you claim to be a hero. So when the Quran condemned those who write the book in their hand, but hold on, isn't it the Quran says that Allah is the one going to collect the Quran? Did he? Let's read together. <clears throat> All right? Read carefully. Chapter 75, verse number 17. Allah, he promised, 
and he make it clear that it is him who will collect the Quran. Inna alayna jam'uhu wa Qur'anahu. It is on us, us who, and the funny here, the Muslims, they say we believe in monotheism, right? But Allah is always us. He's always us. You ask the Muslim why he's us, they say, oh, because he is, like, this is majestic. So are you saying to me that your Allah, he don't feel enough respect to himself if he is one? <laughs> so he decided to call himself us? Hey, Mr. Us, how are you doing? Do you feel better now? I'm calling you us. Allah is us. Allah don't feel he is respected enough if he is not calling himself us. Do you see it? How you say to us, we Muslim, we believe in monotheism, and your God is obsessed with us. It is us, it is we. What is wrong with you? When the Muslim they say Allah he use us as a majestic king. Well hold on, that means it's suitable for Allah to be more than one. Not to be one, because he is jealous from a king saying we. Allah is not self-confident. He don't think that he is, is okay if he say uh, uh, me. No, it's we. It's us. What an idiot. So, if you want to talk to a Muslim, call him Mr. Allah is us, how are you doing? How is your God us doing? Uh, uh, can I talk to Allah? Us, we hear you. Who is talking? Oh, Mr. Us, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> uh, my name is Allah. Uh, but you just said, Us, hear you. Yes, because it's not suitable for me to say me. Also, oh, like, Us, me, Allah. The thing stupid. Speak to me with respect. I am Allah. Okay, I'm confused now. Are you Allah or us? You put us if you don't say the word Allah. Okay, I'm not going to say the word Allah. So, Mr. Us, how are you doing? What's wrong with you? Don't use it this way. Okay, I'm confused. You said if I don't use the word Allah, I can use the word us. Exactly. Okay, and I just call you us. Yes, you did. So why are you upset? Because I can't call myself us. You don't call me us. But what? What? Hello? D did you hang up on me, us? Hey, Mr. Us, are you there? Mr. Mr. Us? I, I think us, he lost his connection. What's wrong with this religion? And even, even Mr. Us, in different verse in the Quran, if you remember, he go and he say, if Allah, he decide to have a partner, he will take this partner from us. Like, what the heck? So Allah is one, and now Allah will take a partner. And that partner is us. Is that a fake us or real us? Because remember, he's talking about having a partner, which is a wife. So Allah is it like his two gender in the same time, like he is, or maybe he's like shaitan, you know? Anyone know the story of shaitan according to Muhammad? Who knows what the story of shaitan? There's a verse in the Quran, look like Allah and Shaitan is the same. They are like they have two gender in the same time, maybe. Because if Allah is one, and then he will have sex with a woman, or a creature have a private part of female, whatever it is. 
And then he says, if we want to have sex, if we want to get married, if we want to have a, a girlfriend, uh, we are going to have it with someone from us. From us. Okay, us who? I thought you are one. I thought us is just a word of majestic. Mr. Us? The logic of Muhammadan. Allah is one, but he is us. And he want to have sex with us. There's a verse in the Quran. Speaking about shaitan, he have a children. And the Muslim, they try to find a solution for this. I mean, solution, solution. This is the reason of solution. Islam is the solution. This is what they say to you. So how the Muslims, they come with the solution for this story that shaitan, he have a children. Hmm? They said, uh, that shaitan, he had sex with himself. He had sex with who? With himself. Brother, how that happen, brother? It's very easy, brother. Let us open the interpretation. Okay, what it says in the interpretation? That shaitan, he have a penis in the right thigh, and he have a vagina in the left thigh. So when he have intercourse nikah, he do if this with that, and he shake his legs. Very simple. Look and look how smart. They put them in the perfect location. The penis in the right thigh. Facing a vagina in the left thigh. Shaitan, when I do boom boom, what he do? He shake his legs. He shake his legs like, okay, doing nikah now. And then he have orgasm, and then he make himself a bread net. Very simple. And then what happened next to that brother? <coughs> I lost my voice. What a dirty topic. What a filthy religion. And what happened after that? Do he deliver like after nine months? No, brother. He lay eggs. He what? He lay eggs. Eggs. <clears throat> oh, he legs. True story. Any Muslim will say I'm making up stories. Anyone? <coughs> Let us see. وقال مجاهد let us read together وقال مجاهد إن إبليس أدخل فرجه في فرج نفسه فباض خمس بيضات فهذا أصل ذريته uh, translation مجاهد he said that إبليس he enter his فرج which is a private part into the other فرج which is the vagina the meal, you know, and then he lay five eggs, and this is the origin of his children. And they said that Allah He created for him in his right thigh a penis, and his left thigh a vagina, and he do nikah to this by that. Where's the Muslim? They say the word nikah mean marriage. Hey Muslims who keep saying to me the word nikah mean marriage. Do you see it? فَهَوَ يَنْكَحُ هَذَا بِهَذَا Shaitan, he was marrying his legs to each other. <laughs> do you see the word yankah? Muslim, do you see the word yankah? How you say to us that the word yankah means marriage and now Shaitan is having sex with himself? And it says فَهَوَ يَنْكَحُ هَذَا بِهَذَا So he, if this by that, this is what Yankah means, you liar. He go, your prophet got you busted. Uh, 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 uh. Your prophet got you busted. Uh, 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 uh. Where is the sincere Muslims? I open my pal talk until now nobody is even texting. No sincere Muslims. 
genius. They found a solution and then the story continues. Every day he lay down 10 eggs and from every eggs, from each one of them, there's 70 male and female shaitan. Look at this brother. I mean, look at this. Let's be honest here. This is this is this is a story by itself. Look how they organize the story. First, okay, how you can explain the stupid Muhammad saying that Allah he sent Shaitan down to earth alone? He did not send the female with him. Okay, and then he says he have a children. How he get the children? So now we have to find a solution. <laughs> We have to find a solution. The solution, brother, Allah created for him a penis in the right leg and a vagina in the left leg. And then he do nikah by his by his penis to his vagina by shaking them. And then he lay an egg, brother, and from every egg, uh, 10, uh, uh, sorry, he lay 10 eggs. And then from every egg, there is a 70 male and female shaitan. <laughs> And if we use Google Translation, you will see it. I can post the link for you. Let us see. I will copy the link <clears throat> and post it. Give me a second. And now let us go and do Google Translation. <coughs> All right. It says here, let us see. Okay. He has his uh, offspring. Mm-hmm. Let us see. Okay, they ask. They ask him, "Do Iblis have a wife?" <laughs> so how he have how he have offspring? <laughs> and then the guy he said, "Truly, this is a wedding I did not witness." <laughs> Unbelievable, brother. Do Iblis have a wife? The other said, "Brother, this is a wedding party. I did not witness." <laughs> then it's mentioned, etc., that he have a spring, and then uh, uh, Mujahid said, "The devil insert his vagina with his private part." He said, "What?" So he lay five eggs, mm -hmm. and this is the origin of his spring. Of spring, wonderful. And they say that Allah, Allah Mighty, Almighty created for him a penis in his right thigh and a vagina in the left thigh. <laughs> and he do nikah by if in this, by that. <laughs> and then from every egg, you know, he laid 10 eggs every day. He produced 10 eggs. And from every egg, there is 70 seton, female and male seton. And this is how we start having babies. And let me now give you the link so you can save it and you can use Google Translation if you wish to do so. <clears throat> and this is Tafsir al Qurtubi. Okay. Uh, somebody you want to debate? Okay. Uh, we try to call him, it's not working. He wants to debate. We call him, it's not working. I just called you, Mr. Busted TV. I mean, your name is so strong, Busted TV. <coughs> I just called you. It says you need to update. Obviously, you are using a storing software mostly. I told you you need to use your computer so I can call you. So download PalTalk in your computer and I will call you immediately. All right. I call you. It says call is rejected. And it gives me the reason why. You have to update. Obviously, your software is maybe storing one. So going back. To the corruption and preservation of the Quran. Do you know that Aisha when she said that the Quran, the, uh, the chapter, uh, this guy he was talking about, 
the cow used to be equal to the chapter of Al Ahzab. If we go right now to the chapter of Al Ahzab, all right, and we try to count how many verses there. This is Al Ahzab chapter, chapter number 33. If we go down to the end, we will find. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. This is 73 verses. Okay. 70 what? 73 verses. Aisha, she said that the chapter of Al Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of the cow. How many verses are missing, Muslims? Any Muslim can help us? Was Aisha lying? Who is a Muslim is willing to call me and tell me Aisha is a big fat liar? I don't mind if you say so. You can refute me by just saying Aisha is a big fat liar. Who wanna call me and get me busted? Anyone? <clears throat> Who is a Muslim wanna call me and get me busted? Aisha, she said. That the chapter of Al Ahzab is equal or was equal to the chapter of the cow. The cow chapter, as you see here, let us go to the end. Uh, this website is not fast enough to scroll all the way down. Okay, you can open it from your side anyway. 286 verses. 286 verses. This is the cow chapter. The Ahzab is 73 verses. So what we will do, very simple. We will take from 286 verses minus 73. There's 213 verses missing in one chapter alone. I want to call you, I love you. Okay, let me block you. I have some people who they are obsessed with me and they keep sending me messages, stupid messages. I love you. Actually, I received a message from a woman. She said, if anyone talk to you, I will kill her. Can you believe it? Crazy people. Drugs. Hashish. Khadija. Khadija is all over the place. Any Muslim have an answer? 200, 200 what? 213 verses are missing in one chapter. Who said so? Aisha. True or false, Muslims? This is the book of Asriyuti. And this is, by the way, is referred in many books. Al-Itqan fi ulum al-Qur'an. Big, big, big scholar of Islam. It's not a joke. Not like those you see in YouTube. He has tons of books. He have a he have a book about the effort. Boom, boom. Very, very interesting book. Present Islam as it is. Maybe one day I can translate it. 
value number one, page number 662. We go down, it says here. <clears throat> it's mentioned to us from, 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 from Urwa ibn Zubair, from Aisha. She said that the chapter of Al-Ahzab, it used to be recited in the time of the Prophet. 200 verses. 200 what? Verses. This is one of the hadith. And when Uthman, he wrote the book, listen carefully, she just said Uthman, the one who wrote the book. We could not find from it except what we have now. Different hadith. From, 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 etc. It says that Aisha, she said, they used to be the chapter of Al-Ahzab counted as 72, 73. Uh, this is a person talking about what she said if she was if she, it was 73 72 and then it says uh, if it was equal to al-baqarah and it was equal to al-baqarah and we used to read there the chapter of al-rajim it's a chapter of a story to death this is missing too let us continue here <clears throat> here it says that we used to read there in the same chapter the verses about a sheikh wa sheikha farjuhum. This is about stoning to death. Is missing in the Quran. If you remember, this is the verse which is eaten by the goat, which is another proof that Islam is a is a joke when they say about preservation of the Quran. Yeah. But this is what the Muslim they say to us that the Quran was preserved. And then we find that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah. More than 200 verses are missing in one chapter alone. And by the way, I'm not a fan of approving the Quran to be corrupt, because what the point of approving a corrupt book to be corrupt anyway? Can you corrupt it twice? You know what I mean? It's like... <coughs> uh, it's like a person saying to me, uh, this is a dollar, which is uh, fabricated. And then there's a guy, he made a copy of the fabricated dollar. Well, all of them, they are fabricated anyway. You know what I mean? There's no point for me. And actually for me, I prefer to speak to a Muslim who believe the Quran is preserved 1,000%. Do you know why? So when I show him the Quran saying stupid things about history, about science, about contradiction, he can say to me, oh, somebody play with it. It's for our benefit, actually, as a Christians, if the Muslims keep insisting that the Quran is preserved, even though it's not. You know what I mean? It's a lot easier because you know, like, okay, if somebody came to me and says, well, in the Bible, there is uh, uh, someone saying this. I say, well, this someone saying this, this is his opinion, or this is what he say, or he was meditating. For me, what count mostly is what God said. God said to Moses, this is God talking. Moses talking to God, this is Moses saying. In the Quran, we don't have such a thing supposedly the Muslim they say every word there is Allah is talking and by the way this is absolutely stupid anyone knows why anyone knows why because if the Quran is word by word from Allah and nobody can make Quran look this is what the Quran says that nobody can make a chapter like it but we just heard the guy saying that Allah never gave a chapter correct we just heard no man, Khan, uh, saying that nobody, um, nobody received a chapter. Muhammad never received a chapter. Because a chapter is something organized, chapter written all together, chapter is made together, not something 
<coughs> suffering from flight of thought. And actually, there's a clear proof that the Quran and the word surah is not a chapter. When the Muslims they translate the word chapter, they say surah, I mean chapter. And that's why I say it's not surah. The Quran, when Allah he gave him to Muhammad, supposedly, he did not give him chapters. Nowhere. If you go to chapter 11, verse number 13, it says, or they say, he, you know, to Muhammad, he forged the Quran. So people, they, they, in the time of Muhammad, they accuse Muhammad that this is a fraud. In the time of Muhammad, the Muslim, they lie to us, they say, oh, in the, when the Arab, they heard the Quran, they were amazed, etc. Look carefully what it says. The Quran says to them, well, if this is a fraud, then bring me 10 surahs. 10 what? Surahs. Correct? Do you see it? But there's no surahs as a chapters. There was verses. So surah here was presenting a verse. Muhammad the idiot, he don't understand what surah mean. Because to say, bring me 10 surahs, you should have surahs first. Right? Now, anyone here can help me how we can defeat Muhammad right away with this verse. He just said, bring me 10, 10 surahs, right? Bring me 10 surahs. Okay, what about two surahs? What about one surah? Why he said 10? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Why he's asking for 10? I mean, Muhammad always stuck with number 7 or number 40. Now it is 10. Simply, Muhammad is trying to make it extremely stupid. Okay, bring me 10 like them. What about you say, bring me 1 like them? Why 10? Maybe they can make 1. And they can make 2. And they can make 3. And they can make 4. And they can make 5 and 6 and 7. And 8 and 9. But 10 they cannot. You see how stupid it is? However, let us prove that this is a stupid thing to say. Why? If we ask the Muslims who they are in the chat right now. Hey Muslims, is the Quran word by word from Allah? Who want to help me? How many hours we are live on air? Two hours and 30 minutes. Are we receiving great education, guys? This is a free school for everybody. Totally free. For the poor and for the rich. Are we learning? Give me 10 verses like it. Give me 10. It can't be 10. It sort of can't mean chapter because Muhammad did not have any chapter at that time. And even we heard the guy confirming that. He said that the chapter of the cow. Muhammad received it within more than a decade. So how Muhammad, he says, give me 10 chapters, if you don't have chapters. But listen carefully. When the Muslim, they say, nobody can make Quran like Allah. Well, let me prove to you that Mary, she made Quran better than the Quran of Allah. Shall we? <laughs> You know, human beings sometimes is silly, you don't use it as a brain. This is chapter 19. Muslims, this chapter is chapter of what? The chapter of Mary, Maryam, the mother of Jesus, supposedly. Okay. Who is talking there? They said Allah. Hold on, are you sure? Read carefully. Whatever you know, Muhammad do not know what he's saying. This is something he copied from the book of Warak ibn Ufa. And remember when the Lord he called, uh, he called who? Zechariah in secret. Huh? Okay. Who's talking? If Allah is talking, he will not say, Remember when the Lord. 
if I am the Lord. Correct? And remember when his Lord called him, who is his Lord? Who's talking? The fool, they will say it's Allah, but doesn't make sense. Because Allah, if he is talking, he will not say his Lord. And then he said, he said, okay, who is said? Who he said? Zechariah. Okay, how do you say that the Quran, nobody can make Quran? And this is what, what Zechariah said. Do you understand my point? Give me 10 surahs like it. Okay, here we go. That's the chapter in front of us. Half of it is not Allah talking. If nobody can make Quran. So how is Zechariah? He's making Quran. Because those are the words of Zechariah. He said, my Lord, indeed my bones have a growing... If, 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 so this is Zechariah to, talking. But remember you said nobody can make Quran like the Quran of Allah. And this is Zechariah talking again. And this is Zechariah talking again. And now, the one who is talking, we do not know. Look, they say between the bracket and Allah, he said. Okay, how Allah, he said. Muslims, are you saying Allah, he speaks to Zechariah directly, but he never speaks to Muhammad directly? And here you need to ask yourself as a Christian. Remember, this is very important. Take a note of it. How come when we read the Bible, we don't see Jibreel coming to Jesus to deliver him a revelation? Anywhere in the Bible we see that Jesus here received revelation from somebody? Anyone remember any verse? So if Muhammad is a prophet and he had the same God, how come Muhammad he received every single revelation as they call it from a guy his name is Jibreel? But here we see that Allah speak to Zechariah and then the Messiah says it clearly that I am the word. I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, and he speak with the authority, and he did not receive revelation. Yes, he said that everything I have is from my father, because he's saying he's my father. Even the Quran says when the child is born, that is the Messiah, he said from the cradle, I am the Messiah. He's born with the word of God in the Quran. Muhammad waited 40 years as a pagan, and then the angel came to him, and he squeezed him, and now the angel delivering verses. How come Jesus do not need delivery? He's born with the word of God. Actually, the Quran says clearly that the Messiah is the word of God. And that is a copy of what the book of John says. In the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, the, the Word is the God. The Word is God. And the Word became a flesh. So Jesus confirmed to be the walking, talking, living Word of God. Muhammad claiming to be a messenger and he challenged people to make Quran like this. And yet he is saying to us that the one is talking there is Zechariah. Did Muhammad spoke to Allah in the Mi'raj? Well, there is some stories, some Muslims, they claim that he spoke, you know, but there's no way really to confirm such a thing because if Allah he speak to Muhammad directly in the Mi'raj and that can be found in the Hadith shouldn't we ask ourselves what is the verses isn't it the word of Allah which Muhammad he said to which Allah he said to Muhammad is Quran are you saying to me if what Allah he says is a holy scriptures okay Muhammad he went to Allah okay he received what from Allah Muslim, they say he receives scriptures then. That will be direct, right? Okay, what is this? Which, which one? Which one in the Quran, in the whole Quran, is what Allah, he said to Muhammad when he was in heaven? None. You getting my point? The one who have a Chinese, Korean name, I don't know how to read your name. Are you getting my point? If Allah, he spoke to Muhammad directly in the heaven, that should be Quran. Which one is important? The word of Allah delivered by Jibreel, an angel, or 
the word which Allah he spoke to you directly so how come we cannot find in the Quran do you remember the hadith it says that Allah he gave Muhammad order to pray 50 times okay where is the verse how Allah he gave it to him do you understand what I'm saying if Allah he gave him a verse then the verse should be there This is all his fictions. So the Quran itself, the idea of the Quran is a word by Allah, and nobody can make Quran is a stupid idea because as you see, Zechariah is talking, Mary is talking, the angel is talking. So where is Allah? How you say to me, Shaitan is talking? Did Shaitan, did the Quran in, uh, uh, include Shaitan talking? Any Muslim there to say no? So how you say nobody can make Quran? If the Quran says Shaitan is talking, here we go. Shaitan is making Quran. Allah said to Shaitan, "What made you not to prostrate when I commanded you?" Shaitan he says, "I am better than Adam." When this is Quran, do you see it? Shaitan is talking. So when they say to you that nobody can make Quran, brother, amazing, and we cry, they cry for the words of Shaitan. When the Sheikh he recite this verse, half of it is Allah is talking, and half of it is Shaitan is talking, and you are crying. Who is a stupid here? Are we listening, people? Are we learning what we're, we're trying to say? stupid religion brother I heard this sir I was crying why you're crying from Allah words or shaitan words now if you download this video please do me a favor try to cut those topic like shorter like now we talk about this topic make it a topic about sir okay Muslims they cry when they receive is here Quran they cry because Allah words or shaitan words Obviously, the Muslim they cry, it doesn't matter what they hear. The shaitan is talking. And how nobody can make Quran and Allah and the Quran, and shaitan is speaking in the Quran, and this is Quran. When the, when Allah he says, Iblis said, that is Iblis talking. Do you see it? How nobody can make Quran? And hold on, here there's another question. Allah he end his sentence with in the letter yan sajidin shaitan he end his sentence with yin too shaitan and Allah make a rap Allah he said to him why you don't eat fat rat shaitan he says to him I cannot do that Allah he says why it's not very well cooked he said to him it's not well reserved and booked i mean what is this shaitan and allah exchange a rap <laughs> do you see the stupidity So Allah make a rap, Shaitan he answer him by a rap. And nobody can make rap like Allah. And the Muslim, they hear this, they cry. What a stupid religion. Or what about Isa is talking, Musa is talking, Mary is talking, I mean everybody is talking. So how you say to me the Quran is the word of Allah? 
You see, when we say the book, the Injil, or the Bible is the book of God, we don't mean that every word is said that God he said. Moses he said. Moses he said. Peter he said. Peter he sent letter. Huh? Peter is talking. Paul he sent letter. Paul is talking. When God he said to Moses, that is God is talking. When Moses he talked to God, that is Moses talking. Muslims with their madness, they lost their mind, believing that everything there is God is talking. And this is an amazing book. Nobody can make like it. And then we check out, we find this book is the most hilarious, stupid book. As an example, when Allah was talking, when Allah was talking, and he said the sun sitting in murky water, or he found where the sun set. Suddenly the Muslims, they will say to you, no, uh, you know, this is how, this is Alexander the Great, he, you know, he thought, he thought, but Allah is talking what he thought, where it says he thought. Where, where, where is the word he thought? Why are you adding words? Allah is short of words? What do you mean he thought? Is it Does it say there he thought? Can't Allah, he says. And if he thought, why Allah is even don't say, well, this is was anyway. I mean, this is stupid. We corrected him. So if he thought, did Allah correct him? And why Allah doesn't say he thought? Because the one is talking is Allah. Until he reached the sitting place of the sun. Hey, Muslims, what is the, what is the sitting place of the sun? He thought too? Allah is talking, Allah is saying, he keep going, keep going, keep going, boing. He arrived to the sitting place of the sun, where we can find that location. And then Allah speak about what he found, not what he thought. He said he found that sitting in a spring of boiling water. The Muslim, they lie to us, they say, oh, this is about, you know, when he went, you go to the ocean, you see the sun going down, you think it's going down in the water. Hold on, hold on. First of all, there's no ocean. It says a spring of water. Since when a spring of water is an ocean? Well, the story is saying here that there's a spring of boiling water where the sun goes every day. There's no ocean. Right? <clears throat> uh, love those who believe, who not believe in Allah guide into them this is chapter 929 are you sure i know this guy is joking yeah don't say those things by the way i will block you if you are just a joker and you put my name next to it and then you make me read your silly words i will block you don't waste my time Do you see the stupidity? And then the guy, he keep going, keep going, until what? Until he found where the sun rise, the, the rising place of the sun. And again, he found it. He found what? The rising place of the sun, the place. Until when he came to the rising place of the sun. Okay, hold on. What do you mean? Where, where is the rising place of the sun? Where we can find it? I, I thought the sun rises everywhere. But even in Alaska. Stupid religion. And then they say to you, can you make a book like this? No, I can't. If I make a book like this, people will, 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 will die laughing at me. You have to be a certified idiot to make a book like this. He found where the sun rise from, and he found where the sun set. And then the story go more complicated. There's a huge nation who they are 1,000 to one of us, which means if we are now 7 billions, they are 7 trillions. 
Where are the now, brother? Allah, he inspired prophet uh, 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 Alexander. The, Alexander the Great was a homosexual. Even this guy, he made him the prophet. You know, this is nothing changed by the way in Islam. Anything is famous. They say after after I die, they will say Christian prince. He said shahada. He gave a finger to Allah and he became a Muslim. Just wait. Any famous scientist, they make article that he converted to Islam. George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw, brother, he said that if the prophet was exist now, he can solve the problem of the words in ten minutes dry during the time drink his coffee in the morning. Okay, where we can find this book? And I will not be surprised if they say to me, say that Christian Prince, when he was dying, you know, when he gave his last fart, his fart was saying, Subhanallah, I recorded it. <laughs> See? They are obsessed. They look at the cloud, they say, look, it says Allah. They look at the tree, the tree is praising Allah. They look at the rabbit. Do you see what the rabbit he did when he heard the Adhan? Well, my friend, your prophet, he heard the Adhan every day, and what I know, he could not have sex since then. Obviously, the Adhan is doing a great job. And he lost his mind, and he imagined himself having sex. And then Allah, when I fixed that, he sent him a dish of shish kebab. So he went... He keep walking and he found people who they are stupid. Like, hold on, he found what? Until he reached between two mountains. True story. Can you make Quran like this? You cannot. Isn't it obvious? You cannot. So my friend, the Quran is preserved. You like it, you don't. It's proving to be true. Student of knowledge knows, who studies Ulum al Quran, that the most difficult topics are Ahruf and Qiraat. And the concept of Ahruf and the reality of Ahruf and the relationship of the Rathmatic Mus'haf with the Ahruf and the preservation of the Ahruf. Is it one? Is it three? Is it seven? And the relationship of the Qiraat to the Ahruf. This is a topic that when you're the beginning, beginning student of knowledge, you're like, what is all of this going on here? When you go a little bit more, you learn to simply memorize what your teachers say and regurgitate it out. And you don't fully comprehend. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. Yeah, when you discover how, excuse me, how popo it is. When you do deep dive, you know, when you go inside the grave, the grave from outside look nice. Marble, there's the flowers around it. The garden guys, he keep cutting the grass. They bury you under a tree. But the grave is a grave. That is Islam. That is Islam. Just do a deep dive and you sort of go crazy like them. Look, they are fighting over what his guy said because he said the truth. What he found, he discovered when he did deep dive. And by the way, he have, he said, he, ha he is certified in diving. Scuba diving, scuba scuba do. So when Mr. Scooby Scooby Doo decided to do Scooby Scooby diving, he discovered what? And this isn't new. This is from the time of the Sahaba. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay is not some even average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. He is the master. He is who he is. And he goes, The master of the Quran, the highest Muslim, they call him a master of the Quran ever. This person, he have a doubt about Islam because of this. Muhammad, he could not repeat the same verse twice. So he claimed that Allah, he sent him seven Quran in seven way, which is the most seven stupid excuse. Because if this is the case, why Allah did not give seven Torah to Moses? Yes. <laughs> hey Isa, did Allah give you seven Injil? <laughs> All of those garbage, madness and stuff happened only with Muhammad. Allah gave me seven Quran. Why? Because he cannot repeat the same verse twice. 
They ask him in the morning to say the verse. He said, afternoon, say it, Muhammad. He said it differently. He said, what, what, what's wrong with you? Why it's different? He said, Allah, I don't tell you. Uh, Allah, he gave it to me uh, seven way, seven way. You know, seven way. What is all of this stuff? Um, again, this is the, you, you were asking some very honest question. It's the first time I'm saying these things. Many people are aware who listen to my lectures that I've mentioned the crises that happened to me at Yale. This was the issue. That the issue of ahruf and preservation and qiraat and relationships between them, these are very, very difficult issues. And the most advanced of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to <laughs> solve all of the... Un <laughs> Did you hear? The most advanced... Not the most advanced YouTuber, not the most advanced brother and sister. Today, I'm going to explain to you how to use iPhone. I got iPhone yesterday. And now I will do iPhone 11 and 11, 11 12 according to the Akamaic interpretation. First of all, iPhone is the product made by Allah. And the proof is the following. It said iPhone. Zakir. Uh, but Allah, he liked to say we. Exactly. Allah, he did not like to call himself we in the time because he was phoning us. Ah, that's deep. I never thought about it this way. So the most advanced scholars, not the most advanced YouTubers, they are so confused about the stupidity of Muhammad. What else? Tell us more all of the unanswered questions in there. Here's the point. These issues should only be discussed amongst people who know what the Qiraat are and who understand some of these questions that are being So raised. is what you're saying the shak that came, or not the shak, but the, the crisis that you had was in relation to this question of the relationship between the Ahraf and the Qiraat, basically? No, 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 the crisis I had wasn't that. The crisis I had was, well, yeah, wait, that, that, that was what generated. But what was the crisis? The crisis was very simple traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. You see, in a Muslim environment, there's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ta'af. And that's great, alhamdulillah. When you go to- To explain to you what he said in Arabic, he said in Muslim environment, we say we heard and we obey, which, which means we don't discuss the stupid things is there. That is the truth. In Muslim environment, we don't question the stupidity. We heard and we obey. This is what he said in Arabic. Samina wa atana. We heard and we obey. But this is in Muslim environment. But if we want the truth, look what will happen. To academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, the, the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, <laughs> Did you hear what he said? The emperor with no clothes. This is Muhammad. Those people, they are not going, we obey and we heard. And we heard and we obey. And they will not say peace upon him. They will say the emperor is naked. Did you hear Yasser Qadi? The emperor is you, Muhammad is naked. This is what he said. Your prophet, false prophet, Muhammad is naked. No bra, no panty, and no eyelashes no more. All the decoration you put in the top of him is not working. Peace be upon him. Allah praise him. Allah pray for him, not to him. All the madness you put around him to make him holy is naked now. Academia. The Strapteza Club. With no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that, and they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true. And this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat and they'll bring... It's in your own book. They are not bringing something new. It's where? It is in your own books. They are not bringing something new. When he say to you, your own books, it's been written by you, preserved by you, copied by you, 
and given to us by you. So why you get upset when we read to you what is you gave us? You, you. So this is the problem with the followers of the yo-yo God, Allah, who keep coming up down every third part of the night, as Muhammad said. Allah, the yo-yo God, he was a yo-yo in the hand of Muhammad. He bring him up, he bring him down. Muhammad, he make a verse, Allah told me about my private part. He used him for his private part, he used him for his zucchini, he used him for food, he used him for anything. Any, anything Muhammad want to give authority for himself, he said the yo-yo God in my hand, he said to me this, who, did, who dare to discuss? That's it, the yo-yo God says so. And this is what Yasir Qadi is saying to you. You have a yo-yo God. Because they're in your own books, they're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat and they'll bring you athar and then you add to that very well-known issues of I don't even want to be explicit. And then you bring on top of that makhtutat and then and then. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> the standard narrative of Islam has holes. And the Muslim, they ate his face for saying this. If you go on YouTube right now, you will find tens of thousands of Muslims making videos against this guy. Before he said that, he was a scholar. He was the amazing guy. He was the most, he's a friend of Zakir Naik, a brother. Zakir Naik, and Zakir Naik now is against him. He just said the truth. And then the guy, in order to fix it, he tried to fix it, but he make it more blind. So he make more videos. To... <laughs> so you Muslims, when you say to me, your Quran is preserved, we die laughing. Your God, my friend, he could not even stop a goat from eating the Quran. I mean, forget about Christian prince, the kuffar, they try to corrupt the work of Allah, blah, 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 blah. A goat, a goat. There's a YouTube. Okay, are we connected again? I hope so. Because I lost connection for a minute or so. This is a hadith reported by Aisha that there is a goat, she entered the house of Muhammad. She entered the bedroom of Muhammad. She jumped in the top of Muhammad because remember, Muhammad was dead. Where was Muhammad? He's dead. The verse of stoning and breastfeeding adult ten times. And this is an amazing thing, by the way. There is a God. He wrote a book and he gave information, instruction, or instruct. Allah, he worked in the gym. And he is a gym instructor. And today he will teach you, if you are a female, go into the gym. Because you're not allowed to see men in the gym. So you have to feed every man there ten times from your breast. Until he is satisfied. In ten different days. So Allah, he made a verse about it. Can you believe there's a book, they call it holy. It says, and the verse of a stoning and of a breast feeding an adult revealed. Like what? Verse of what? Breast feeding for adult? I'm angry. I'm very angry. Actually, I wanted to open a business in Las Vegas, but I could not find rich people to support my project. I was thinking to make a drive it through breastfeeding for adult. I mean, this is Las Vegas. Hello. Like, and we make it halal. Halal. You cannot see the women. You see only her boobs. Brother, our women, they don't shake hands. You can suck their nipples. Very conservative we are. You are a very, very conservative religion. But you can suck the nipples of our wives and you can hold it too. It's okay. Because all day, hello, come on, you have to hold them so you can suck it correctly. Hmm. And then what happened? A goat, she entered the house. She jumped in the top of Muhammad, who is sleeping in the top of the below. Remember, Muhammad is dead. The verse of a stone in a breastfeeding adult ten time was re revealed, and the paper was and with with me under my pillow. 
Muhammad he asleep in the bed of Aisha and actually Muslim they confirm that Muhammad he was buried in the same location which is the bed of Aisha where he died so there's no question that Muhammad he was there so when the Messenger of Allah died we were preoccupied with his death and a time sheep came and ate it Meh. okay but how the goat ate it Muhammad is sleeping and his head in the top of the of the pillow. So what the goat she did, what an ugly goat, she jumped in the top of Muhammad and she pushed Muhammad away, Muhammad in the floor. She flipped the pillow, she got the paper, yummy, 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 and now the Quran is gone. And the Muslims are discussing, the Quran brother is preserved brother. You eat it, don't you see? Even a goat ate your Quran. Who is a Muslim? This is a challenge for other Muslims who will watch this video. Who can recite for us the verses of 10 times breastfeeding so we can add them back in the Quran? Remember the Muslim they say to us that the Quran is preserved by their heart. They memorize it, okay? The goat, she ate the paper. She did not eat your heart. Recite the verse for me. You know what I'm saying? As long as they say they memorize the Quran by their heart. The goat, she ate the paper. She did not eat your heart. Where is the verse? Who is a Muslim can call me and recite the verse of 10 time breastfeeding for adult, which was given to Muhammad by Allah. Remember the Quran is preserved and nothing is missing. I'm not going to ask you about the stoning to death because a Muslim he can say to me, I, I know what it is. But so why is that the Quran? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? The Muslim they say to you, there's some verses is abrogated by recitation, but not by ruling. What? Why? Which kind of idiot he make a law, he don't want to put it in the book of the law, but he wants you to follow the law. That is crazy. Any Muslim? All right, the video is getting longer, and now we are three hours. I will stop. I was, guys, I decided today to make it short. Only three hours. I need to learn how those guys, they can make a video for 15 minutes. Honestly, I want to learn to do that. 15 minute video, how you can do that? You know, like what happened to me, it's like you broke a, a faucet, and the water keep coming and it take you like two, two hours three hours to fix it to close it back information is keep coming oh but i will try to make it shorter you know maybe like uh, yeah tomorrow i think i will make it short last time i said i will make it short it was five hours and 30 minutes it sounds like I am like Allah, I keep my promises. <laughs> yeah, I will try to make even, but what we will do if we make short videos, I will try, I will repeat some topics, we mention them just to make them short. So those who watch the full video, they have a full understanding, but those who want like fast food, let us say, maybe we can make some shorter one, all right? Yeah, you see, because I have a passion to share the truth and I can't stop with the time, even though timing is very comforting for me to make it 15 minutes and go and enjoy the rest of my day doing whatever I want to do. But I prefer to sit, break my back. It's not easy to sit for many hours, you know, in, on a chair. Uh, but. I'm doing my best so you guys you can have in the future because time will come and Christian Prince will not be here. It's just a matter of time. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe 10 years, we don't know. But time will come, my friend. And there's nobody can explain to you what we're explaining. Because nobody is brave to say things the truth as it is. Nobody is bold to say things as it is. And if he is, how much he knew. What language he speak? So the Lord, he provide us with some gifts, knowing, speaking the language of the devil, 
which is not really his language, it was our language, and he stole it from us. So we can expose his lies. So we will leave those videos behind when one day Christian Prince disappear. And those videos should stay forever by your support and by your help. So download them, share them. As you see, I don't keep my videos because YouTube is the devil sponsoring Islam. Yesterday we showed you the video where a Muslim, he called us animals, but YouTube will not consider it as a hate speech. But if I play his video, they will say this is a hate speech. The devil is powerful and he will try to stop you. Be consistent, be brave, and trust your Lord. If the Lord is with me, who could be against me? I don't care if it is YouTube. I don't care if it's a Twitter. You know, we knew their game. We knew how they are. We knew how filthy. We knew what, who, who sponsored them and what they sponsor. But that does not make them able to defeat us. We use them. You use even the tool of the devil to defeat the devil. They delete one account, 10 account. We make a new one. Who cares? And people will come. I will post in 10 minutes says, hey, Christian Prince is there and people will come. And I don't care really which account. This is, by the way, is not my main account. This is why it's a small account. I think I have like 45,000 only. But who care? I don't even ask people to subscribe usually because I am not a person who is here to make a channel. I am a person here to share knowledge. So I want to say thank you all for being here. And uh, I trust you that you all will download the video, share it with your children, show them that they lie to you when they say the Quran is preserved. It's a joke. And the preserved Quran is a joke, regardless if it's preserved or not. We laugh at your Quran, the one you, you say it's preserved. The book of stupidity. History is wrong. Science is wrong. Language is wrong. Nothing left to be right. Even the word Quran is wrong. Even the first verse in the Quran is wrong. Even the last verse in the Quran is wrong. I want to finish, but I just remember something which is important to mention. <clears throat> Just to show you how Islam is stupid and how the Quran cannot be a book of God. This guy was saying to us that the Quran is suffering from disorder. It's not organized. Read with me carefully. This is the chapter 5, verse number 3. You can read any translation you want. In this verse, Allah said to the Muslims, It's forbidden for you the blood of the dead meat. Forbidden for you to eat pork. Forbidden for you, blah, 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 food. It's just a manual of food. And then suddenly he says to them, Today, today I completed my favor upon you. And I accepted Islam as religion for you. How that can be? Allah, he perfected Islam in chapter 5, verse number 3. And he say word by word, this day, Islam be, make is perfect. So if Islam made perfect in this day, so why you keep giving us more verses? You know what I mean? This verse should be the last verse in the Quran. The author is closing the book. The author, Jesus in the cross, he says today is completed. Correct? That isn't a cross. This is the first stage as Jesus alive in the earth and then he will be resurrected. This is the second stage. So today is complete. Everything is complete. The first stage. I promise you to come back. I came back to you. I told you I will be crucified. I told you that you would deny me. Three times, I told you who was going to deliver me. I told you what, do, what you will do to me. And everything I said to you happened. Perfect, complete. This verse must be the last verse in the Quran. And if it's the last verse, who put it here? 
And how you put it there? Because you just made a big mistake. This doesn't make sense. You just destroy the book. Because if we follow the book, and what the book is saying, that today I perfected Islam to you, completed my favor upon you. That means all the verses after are a joke. Because we do not need them. From here and before is Islam. The perfected Islam. After that is somebody adding things. How we can solve this problem? The answer is very simple. This is a stupid book. And there's no prophet who wrote it. And those are people who they are after Muhammad. God knows when. They start putting things together, claiming that Muhammad says so, Allah said so. But if Allah he said so, how Allah can be a fool and he says such a thing in a chapter? And look, even the chapter is about Jesus. Al-Ma'idah. <laughs> Al-Ma'idah means the table, which is supposedly Allah he sent to Jesus. Jesus said to Allah, Hey Allah, my disciples don't believe me. Can you send me? Because they asked me for a buffet. Okay, and they said to me, if uh, uh, your God is true, uh, let him send us a buffet. Okay, so Allah, can you send me a buffet? And then Allah, he sent him seven sandwiches. In every sandwich, there's a wheel. I'm not saying that. I can show you the reference. So the chapter is about Jesus. And then you say to me today, I perfected Islam for you. And the verse saying today, I forbid you from eating swine. This is perfect Islam now. A sandwich. What is the connection? The only way to solve this problem that this part of the verse is not part of the verse and it's not even part of this chapter. It's not even part of that date. This is, as you see, a stupid cult. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. We open our pal talk waiting for Muslims who they are sincere to call us and debate us and challenge us. As you see, none of them did. So I'm going to close my pal talk. And now I want to say to you guys, thank you very much. I'm almost done. And when I say almost done, it means we have only one hour left. Okay. <laughs> I'm almost done. Yeah, like, a, let me see. Do I remember anything else I want to add? Um, no, no, it's enough for today. I think it's enough. Too much headache, right? Too much headache. Anyway, may the Lord bless you all. We pray for the Muslims. We pray for everybody. We pray for the Hindus, for the Christians, for the Jews, for everybody who need Jesus. We pray to the Lord, to the Messiah, that the Lord will forgive us for our sin. We are sinners and we confess our sin to you. We are not proud of it, but we are sinners. And you are the one who said to the blind man, you are the one who said to the women, you are the one who said to the one who cannot walk, go and your sin is forgiven. We say to the Lord, say to those people, your sin is forgiven. Forgive them, Lord, and let them repent and come to you. Let the Muslims come to Jesus and see the truth, that he is the truth, he is the light, he is the Alpha and the Omega, and I am the resurrection, he said. If you are seeking resurrection, Muslims, Jesus is the one who will resurrect you. Face it. His name is holy. His act is holy. And right now, as we speak, even in your city book, he is in the holy heaven with the Holy Father. Stay away from the disgusting Muhammad, a person who did not leave any filthy sin he did not commit, from chasing children, to kidnapping, to raping, to stealing, even his own son, wife, he did not leave her alone. How dare you to follow someone like Muhammad and leave someone like the Messiah? Who even your prophet said, when the devil he see him, the devil will melt like salt. When Muhammad he saw the devil, the devil delivered satanic verses in his mouth. When the devil will come to Jesus in the judgment day, as your prophet said, he will melt like salt. That is my Lord, who is yours. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you for those who support us 
in downloading or even by donation. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon. Take care.